All right, everybody. Hamvention. We are on uh, the last day that we'll be here. It's Saturday. There's one more day we won't attend, but uh, here we are. Saturday morning. Just got into the gates about, about 9:45 in the morning. Wanted to go through the MCOM section a little bit and show you that. Good morning. So we got uh, the Mississippi Amateur Radio Association uh, bus. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look here. We got. Now check that out. And so they put down crushed asphalt for the first year and they have not done it. Sorry. You're fine. You're fine. Um, they have not done it again since. So. Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Andrea. K2EZ. Okay, so that's a very familiar call sign. Uh, you, you rove a lot, don't you? Yes. yes. VHF contests. Yes, yes. I participated in a few VHF contests myself, but not like this. So what do you have here? Okay, well, this is my contest vehicle. Uh huh. Rover, as the name says. Okay. And I've got, for the contesting, two basic antenna setups. I started out with the uh, mast here on the rear of the car. Yeah. Originally with just four loops. But now I have uh, a six meter loop on the top, uh -huh. stacked two meter loops on yep. the front edge of the mast, and that's just horizontal polarized omni, uh -huh. just like these are vertically polarized omni, and most of the weak signal, um, long distance contacts are done on uh, sideband, CW, digital modes now these days, right. and those are predominantly horizontal polarized. Right, yeah. So uh, to continue with the antennas, I have one and a quarter centimeters, 220 megahertz on yep. the trailing edge. And these two antennas that stand up are actually two meters loop loops, but I use them on 70 centimeters. Okay. And at 70 centimeters, they become directional broadside to the loop. 3 dB down points are at 120 degrees, so there's a lot of overlap between those. And okay. I have a coax switch that lets me select one or the other antenna so I can have a front rear pattern or a left right pattern and when trying to work a station I just try one antenna if that doesn't work switch to the other there antenna you go. Cool. and they give me uh, some definite gain over uh, better than if, ha if I had stacked loops or even four I think it's about close to 6 dB right. it's nothing like the 70 centimeter Yagi I have on the front but it works right and it works so yeah. in the middle well i often missed on this is i have a normal array of six meters two meters one and a quarter meters and and it's actually dual band 70 centimeter uh -huh. uh, vertical which i use for fm contacts 146.52 223.50 446 and 52.525 yeah i can look on fm there cool and then for non-contest, I have the HF antenna, right? Uh, Tar Heel Model 100, which goes from 10 meters to 80 meters, giving me all that. So away from the VHF contests, right? I, I get on the bands, predominantly 80 and 40 meters. On the front of the vehicle is the newest addition, and this is um, seven Yaggies here. Two meter, five element Yagi, and I don't know the number of elements on the rest. One and a quarter meters, 220 megahertz just below that, and then the 77 centimeter okay. Yagi. Those have much higher gain than the, mm -hmm. the horizontal polarized loops or the stacked loops, okay. or even my directional loops that are standing up. I should mention those are also horizontal polarized because they're fed on the bottom. Right. Then I have the large loops here. That's 902 megahertz. I was going to ask you if you had 33 centimeters. Right. The next one on the far side, uh, at the bottom, is uh, 1.2 gigahertz. Yeah. And that's 23 centimeters. Above that is 2.3 gigahertz, which is 13 centimeters, and then 3.4 gigahertz, which is nine centimeters. Okay, so you have the whole spectrum of uh, VHF, UHF stuff covered. And, well, there's still 5.7 gigahertz, well, I mean, 10 gigahertz, 24 gigahertz. But nobody does those anyway, right, on the contest? It, Quite a few people do 5.7 and 10. Oh yeah, actually, 10 is a very 10 is a very popular band because it has good propagation characteristics, uh -huh. particularly with rain scatter and snow scatter. The rain scatter 
you can get scatter off of uh, rain at at 40,000, 50,000 feet. Yeah. And so you point out a thunderstorm at distance. Somebody else points at that same thunderstorm. They can have real strong signals. Uh -huh. I, I have a two foot dish for those 5.7 and, and 10 gigahertz. Yeah. And from a hilltop in Pennsylvania, I worked up into Vermont. The first day I was really? working with 10 gigahertz. I want to say it was about 280 miles. How much power? Uh, two watts. Yeah. Yeah. That's sound, yeah. That's Something great. Like that. Uh, the two foot dish, which is I think 34 dB gain uh -huh. um, that I had measured, gives me about seven and a half kilowatts or yeah, seven, seven kilowatts uh, ERP on that. Yeah. Uh, in that same uh, hilltop, uh, and that was during the 10 gigahertz and up contest. I worked up into Ontario, and I'm trying to think where I worked to the south. Not real far to the south yeah. on a lot of stations there. So do you uh, do you just stay close to home when you roam, or do you are you, are you or rove? I mean, or do you go other places? I go all over the place. Have you been in Arizona? This is that's I where I'm from. I have not gotten to Arizona. I don't know if you've heard, but uh, we have a group of guys in Arizona that do the VHF contest in conjunction with Summits on the Air. So uh, probably there's sometimes upwards of 10 to 15 people on different summits all with uh, um, uh, 6 meters, 2 meters, uh, 22, uh, 22 megahertz or centimeters or what is it? 22 uh, megahertz. 220. 220 yeah. and then uh, um, 440 and uh, 1.2 gigahertz. All, all, all those are, are and, and some have 905, 905 right? Or is it 902? 902. 902 as well. Uh, I, obviously, I don't do, uh, participate as much as they do. 902 or 903, depending upon the area where you are. Yeah. So we have some up, some words, uh, upwards of five or six bands, uh, portable ops on a summit. Uh, and so the rovers love coming out to and because and, and, all the multipliers and stuff, right? You get I, multiple people. and. I've seen a bunch of uh, some ro rovers out there, some, some yeah. groups getting together and getting very active. And uh, I want to say taking one of the recent top scores. Yep. Out there. That's right. That's right. Yep. So it's fun, but hey, you know what? You're out this far. It's a long way to, to drive, yeah. isn't it? Uh, it's only 600 miles. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I in one contest, uh -huh. I started in Pennsylvania, activated 27 grids, uh -huh. and finished outside of Houston, Texas. Wow. Hey, that's great. In in the 33-hour contest. Yeah. And I went via Dayton, Ohio. So yeah. I went from Pennsylvania out to date and then south towards yeah. Houston. All right, I'll ask you one more. I have a lot of questions, but I'll just ask you one more. Okay. And that is, um, somebody who wants to participate in, in the uh, VHF, UHF contests, not roving, but just participate, what would you say to them? Oh, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> to find out who may be operating the contest and what they're doing near you, that is probably the best uh, place to start. We're seeing a lot of FT8 on six meters, and a lot of people that have HF plus six meter radios can get involved in, in the VHF contest that way without any extra investment, really. Maybe some antenna, uh, Yagi antenna. For two meters and up, a lot of the serious activity is going to be on sideband, CW, or again, FT8. Yeah. Um, there's also meteor scattered. People will do anything for contact, right. contacts in the contests. And uh, so sometimes if you're looking on FM, you don't necessarily find it, but there is an FM only category. People can go out and uh, 146.52 is now allowed to be used. So that's that tends to be the primary search frequency. And I, for example, in Northern Virginia, uh, KM4, KMU, I believe is, uh -huh. is, is his call. He uh, would go out and send emails to a large people people he's worked in the past in the area. So in that area, a lot of people have started participating in the FM only portion of, of that contest. Yeah. And um, during contest days, uh, Northern Virginia 5-2 was like alive with not just him on a big hilltop where he goes. Yeah. And that's vertically polarized. That's the other thing. Side fan is going to be horizontal. Yeah. Um, That's good. Well, okay, thank you. You know what? And let me just get over here with you. And uh, let me just say, um, 
participate in VHF, UHF contests, I mean, the, the numbers I think are declining a little bit. Maybe they're not, but I just feel like there's just not enough people out there participating. So, uh, and it helps the rovers too, right? And there's a, you know, every tech can operate this to yeah. the full extent. And um, uh, we've actually seen some up and down on it. It's, it's fairly healthy, but a lot of changes occur. Yeah. All right, thanks guys, bye.